My name is Deacon Jim, and this is St. Bernadette in South Los Angeles. Today is Friday, March 5th, and let us begin as we always begin, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we begin our celebration, let us praise our merciful God. Lord Jesus, you came to seek out those who were lost. Lord, have mercy. You came to give your life for the sake of all. Christ, have mercy. You came to gather into one family your scattered children. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that purifying us by the sacred practice of penance, you may lead us in sincerity of heart to attain the holy things to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> and let us come together as we break open the scripture. <clears throat> A reading from the book of Genesis. Israel loved Joseph, best of all his sons, for he was the child of his old age, and he had made him a long tunic. When the brothers saw that their father loved him best of all his sons, they hated him so much that they would not even greet him. One day, when his brothers had gone to pasture their father's flocks at Shechem, Israel said to Joseph, Your brothers, you know, are tending our flocks at Shechem. Get ready, I will send you to them. Joseph went after his brothers and caught up with them at Dotham. They noticed him from a distance, and before he came up to them, they plotted to kill him. They said to one another, here comes that master dreamer. Come on, let us kill him and throw him into one of the cisterns here. We could say that a wild beast devoured him. We shall then see what comes of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to save him from their hands, saying, we must not take his life. Instead of shedding blood, he continued, just throw him into the cistern there in the desert, but do not kill him outright. His purpose was to rescue him from their hands and return him to his father. So when Joseph came up to them, they stripped him of the long tunic he had on. Then they took him and threw him into the cistern, which was empty and dry. Then they sat down to their meal. Looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead, their camels laden with gum, balm, and resin to be taken down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, What is to be gained by killing our brother and concealing his blood? Rather, let us sell him to these Ishmaelites instead of doing away with him ourselves. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh. His brothers agreed. They sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm, remember the marvels the Lord has done. When the Lord called down a famine on the land and ruined the crop that sustained them, he sent a man before them, Joseph, sold as a slave. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. They had weighed him down with fetters, and he was bound with chains, till his prediction came to pass, and the word of the Lord proved him true. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people set him free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions. Remember the marvels the king, the Lord, has done. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever believes in him might have eternal life. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A reading from the Holy Gospel, according to the Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel, according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard put a hedge around it, 
dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went away on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain their produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again, he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. When the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants. Who will give him the, pro who will give him the produce at the proper times? Jesus said to them, did you ever read in the scriptures, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they knew that he was speaking about them. And although they were attempting to arrest him, they feared the crowds, for they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> well, in a simple, a very short way, I could say to you, well, we've got two stories here about envy. Envy, envy, and envy. The story about Joseph, of course, was popularized in a Broadway musical called uh, Joseph's Technicolor Dreamcoat which refers to his beautiful coat. The tunic that they mention is mentioned earlier. But as we see, it's his very brothers are resentful of him. And he has one brother that fortunately kind of negotiates around them to ultimately save his life, but not in a very good way because he's sold into slavery and he ends up in Egypt. Most of us could tell us the rest of the story. He's in prison. He interprets a dream for somebody in prison for two men actually. One of them later remembers that he can interpret dreams after he gets out, tells the king he interprets another dream. That's a whole nother homily. Someday we'll do that one, but that's, I mean, that's that whole story. And then, interestingly enough, there's a famine in his own country and his brothers show up with his father trying to get food. And if it hadn't been for their treachery, they probably wouldn't have gotten the food but Joseph negotiates it and later tells them he's their brother. So we have this circle thing that goes on. That's the story of Joseph. You all know it. Probably learned it in Sunday school. But we have this poor problem here with his own brothers, you know, being envious of him and, and treating him badly over it. We have the same thing with the story that Jesus, and the, the two stories are, are parallel stories. Um, he realizes that the Pharisees and the scribes, they want him dead because he, people are following him, they're listening to him, they're not listening to them. And bear in mind, the Pharisees and those folks, they make their money also by contributions that are given to them. And so their jealousy is not just thinking Jesus is wrong or that he's, you know, he's a heretic, it's also it's hitting them in the pocketbook too. So that's another thing that we have to be aware of, that that's going on in there. But yesterday we had the story of the wealthy king not seeing the, um, the uh, beggar at his, at his own front stoop. Today we have the story of the brothers, the Pharisees, who they can't get their problems out of their way. You know, their own envy is blocking them. Imagine what would have happened in the story if the Pharisees and the scribes had endorsed Jesus. Seriously, what would have happened? What would have happened if the brothers had tried to explain to their youngest brother that, you know, maybe sometimes he was rubbing them the wrong way? But both of these stories are about these hateful grudges and how jealousy gets in the way, how these issues get in the way. 
And if you don't believe the jealousy, I, in some ways I think jealousy is maybe one of the, it certainly is one of the sneakier sins, but it also can be one of the most destructive because often jealousy results in good things not happening. Look at our government. Look at our elections. Look at how many of those things are kind of spin on envy and jealousy rather than what's the best decision. Um, our, our face, my Facebook friends are gonna laugh at me again. Um, you know, our Facebook pages, our Twitter pages are, are rife with jealousy and anger and, and you know, irritation over those kinds of things. And that's why I say that I think envy in some ways is maybe even a more destructive sin than some of the other ones. You know, stealing, certainly killing is, as, as we've had, certainly, you know, denying other people their rights and so on. But this whole idea of jealousy seems to take us off in another direction. It has us doing, it ha it's one of those things that makes good people do bad things. And that's the problem. We're so often, all of us are good people. Again, we heard stories yesterday about good people. The rich, the wealthy, young, the wealthy man was not a bad person. It never said that he was a bad person. It was just that he was so tied up with his wealth, he didn't see Lazarus on his stoop. He didn't see the man at his front door. It's the same here. We don't realize that as this envy takes over us, it skews our thinking, it changes our attitude, it makes us a hateful person. And we don't hook into that. We don't, it doesn't matter that the other person next door has a bigger car. It doesn't matter that they park in front of your, you know, in front of your house. It, all those things that we get ourselves tied up in, that we get angry about, that are so trivial and small compared to the, you know, the bad things that are going on now. Um, I sit on the LAPD clergy council and I was at the uh, community police action board last night and shootings are up from like five from the same period last year to 47 shootings and they're almost all domestics. They're tension between people, anger, you know, bad relations, some, and there, a lot of them are couples. Those things going on, I mentioned it yesterday too, I think, but my brothers and sisters, it's those little petty stuff that drives us off the edge that takes us out of this good world. We're called to love and care for each other. Not being worried, not, you know, throwing a guy in a cistern because he's got a nicer jacket than you do. And that's about what the story of Joseph comes down to. You know, they're envious that they're, he's being favored. The scribes and Pharisees are, envy, are envious, of course. In this case, Jesus has taken a couple of swipes at them, but what he's saying is true. And so often we get angry, most angry at the people that tell us the truth. So my brothers and sisters, that's, that's the call for today. You know, we're called to be good people. We're called to try to be good people at all times. We're called to not be envious, to be so grateful for what we have and to love our neighbors, neighbors for who they are, not what they have or what they don't have. Amen. We have opened our hearts and minds to the wisdom of God and the liturgy of the word. Now let us turn to him humbly and sincerely with these common petitions. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Archbishop, Jose, for all the pastors, priests, and deacons of the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, that they be blessed with the zeal and courage to proclaim the values and the obligations of our holy religion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our civil leaders and representatives on the national and local levels, that their laws and their lives be an inspiration to all citizens by reflecting right reason and divine revelation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our youth in particular, that they be given the encouragement and the guidance they need to resist the immoral and sinful presence of our current pagan culture. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the needy, the aged, and the lonely, that they be consoled spiritually by the gifts of grace and also receive care, aid, and loving concern from relatives, friends, and neighbors. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray that we may experience the sacrament of reconciliation with renewed depth to taste the infinite mercy of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died recently, that they may speedily attain the blessedness of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, 
hear our prayer and for our own personal intentions. God of mercy and compassion, bless us by granting these common petitions, for we plead to you in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us pray together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, and deliver us from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Grant your people, O Lord, we pray, health of mind and body, that by constancy in good deeds, they may always merit the defense of your protection. Through Christ our Lord, amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Have a great day. Tomorrow's Saturday, and we're into the weekend. Take care. God bless.